Are you this way for you? So.
to the Nanati. And today also we want to thank the Almighty for giving us somebody whom both the Quran and the Bible spoke of, but had a key on task. Moses declined to go to Egypt, but God said to him, I have selected you, not hero. You are my choice for this mission and the operation. Moses' task, he carried out with God. And there were no casualties recorded on his side. So today's prayer. For His Excellency, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio, to be able to carry on his task without no casualty recorded on his side. This is the dominion of the heavens and earth. Blessed is who has placed in the sky great stars. So he has placed on our land a great man to lead us the right way. And it is he who has made the night and the day in succession for whoever desire to remember or desire gratitude. Today, Sri Union should be grateful to Allah for having chosen a man, a warrior, someone who work indefatigably to make sure that Sri Union are comfortable. And the servant of the most gracious are those who walk upon the earth easily. And when the ignorant address them harshly, 
they say words of peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in chapter 25 verse 60 asks that all honorable men should not address the ignorance, even those if the ignorance address you harshly, but say a word of peace to them. O oh Allah, avert our Lord, avert our land from reform, from all form of calamity, and made the land of Syria, the land of peace and tranquility. His Excellency has been chosen by the God of Noah, by the God of Abraham, by the God of Moses, by the God of Jesus, and by the God of Muhammad, to carry on these enormous and everlasting tasks. Lord, we pray today for seed of love. We pray for ocean of love. May the nation Sierra Leone and all the children down to the villages, His Excellency found seed of love in all them. We also pray for member of parliament that he may found them as comfort of eyes. And of course, this nation we shall have unlimited gracious and unlimited achievement all over the land. Our Lord grant him the hearts of every citizen so that our achievement come 2023 will have no limitation. Our Lord grant him from among his citizens humble parliamentary and the comfort of the eyes and make him a leader, example of those at present and generation yet unborn. Almighty, we thank you for today's day. We thank you for this section. We thank you for the fifth parliament. We thank you for the second republic. We believe that by the time this excellency period is ended, every civilian will be in a joyous and more cheerful mood. We thank you for the light of the speaker of parliament. We thank you for the life of every parliamentarian, city ministers, and every citizen of this soul. And may the seed of love extend beyond the border of the uh, uh, Manorva Union, that every nation in Africa shall stand one day and say, Hey, heal to Sierra Leone. If the sun shall rise one again. Thank you very much, Chef Fumba Swari, and we want the touch. For the Christian prayer, I will now call on Reverend Father Vincent Davis to lead us. Lord God of heaven, glory be to your name. We thank you for another session of parliament and we dedicate its future activities to you. We thank you for the leaders you are appointed to take charge of this business, the business of this nation at this time. We thank you for each and every Sierra Union, home and away. We thank you for ups and downs. We thank you for where we have fallen and you, did, you didn't let us be destroyed. We thank you for where we are rising and you continue to allow us to succeed. We commit, O oh Lord, every leader into your hands. We lift up our president in unto you. We lift up his heart and family unto you. We lift up the hearts of every member of parliament and everyone that is in charge of every department and entity of this nation. We lift up all the organs of government to you. We dedicate our hearts to you. O God, who arrange all things in wondrous order and govern in marvelous ways, look with favor on the assembly, especially our parliamentarians, for whom we pray mercifully, pour out upon them your spirit of wisdom, that they may come to right judgment and decide everything for the well-being and peace of 
all cell units, and may they never turn aside from your will. Grant to Lord of all creation, to us cell units, the desire and willingness to always be united by a fraternal spirit. May the deliberations and decisions of this parliament always be guided by the knowledge of your truth. We ask you to continue to be our God, God over this parliament, God over this nation. We ask you to continue to be God over our rules and regulations. Protect us from the evil one and his agents. Protect us from the divider. Protect us from hate, division, bitterness. Protect us from every evil and from our nation. Bible, Bible says that righteousness exalts a nation. As Christians the world over await the commemoration of the descent of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, we ask you bless our nation, our international partners, all stakeholders to the peace and progress of our nation. And may your holy name be praised, adored and glorified, now and always. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. The Constitution of Sierra Leone, Act No. 6 of 1991. The Fifth Parliament of the Second Republic of Sierra Leone, Commencement of the Fourth Session, Proclamation 2021. In exercise of the powers conferred upon him, by subsection 1 of section 84 of the Constitution of Sierra Leone 1991, Act Number 6 of 1991, the President hereby makes the following proclamation. Now, therefore, I, Julius Mada Bill, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Supreme Head of State, Grand Commander of the Order of the Republic, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Fountainhead of Unity, Honor, Freedom, and Justice, do hereby prorogue the third session of Parliament with effect from Monday, 17th May 2021 and proclaim the commencement of the fourth session of the fifth parliament of the Republic of Sierra Leone at Parliament Building Tawahi on Tuesday, 18th May 2021 at 10 o'clock in the forenoon. May this 11th day of May 2021 signed His Excellency Julius Mada 
Bio. The Honorable Vice President, sir, Mr. Speaker, my Lord, the Chief Justice, Our Excellency, the First Lady, Ministers, Deputy Ministers of Government, Members of Parliament, Your Worship, the Mayor of Freetown, Your Excellencies, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Pray silence for His Excellency, the President.
than a determination to operationalize meaningful human capital development in this country. Human capital development is not a slogan. It is inclusive. It is the key to achieving sustainable development with our own human resources, using homegrown solutions, empowering our local communities, enabling innovation, creativity, technology to bridge the development gap. COVID-19 and healthcare. Let me from the outset express our nation's gratitude to our healthcare workers, security personnel, security personnel, public and private sector workers, civil society and community members, development partners, and everyone who has contributed to make us a low-risk country. We have achieved this as a result of proactive engagement, rigorous planning, central coordination, and thoughtful action that have been informed by data and expert advice. We have leveraged home-built technology solutions. We have also prioritized protecting lives and livelihoods and supported the most vulnerable of our citizens through our, throughout our COVID-19 response. As we transition into vaccination stage, my government will take action to maintain healthcare financing at sustainable levels. Continue to reduce maternal and under five mortality rates. Recruit and train more healthcare staff. Invest in quality mental care, healthcare. Improve patient referral, transportation, blood services. Upgrade medical and diagnostic equipment and upgrade healthcare infrastructure. My government will work with partners to provide more hospital beds, train more midwives, and deliver advanced diagnostic services nationwide. <laughs> Agriculture and food security. Consistent with the National Agricultural Transformation Program, my government, my government remains committed to implementing programs and activities to boost rice self-sufficiency, crop diversification, livestock development, and sustainable forest and biodiversity management. My government will provide higher seed quality to achieve higher yields, establish new plantations of cash crops, and undertake comprehensive soil surveys to determine what type of what crop type or livestock is better suited and what soil management techniques farmers may use. My government will support agricultural financing with 50 million United States dollar credit facility. E vouchers for input and mechanization services, extension services and make pre-position machinery available to private sector and smallholder farmers across the country. The 54 million United States dollar investment in rice cultivation in the Rombe Swamp by AgroEdit LLC and an additional 30 million secured from the Exim Bank to develop the water management and irrigation infrastructure to support rice cultivation around Tolaboom are already on the way. Basic and senior secondary education. More than at any time in the nation's history, more children, including girls, and other excluded child populations are now in school at no expense to their parents or guardians. They have provided 
with free learning materials, more school facilities and infrastructure, school feeding facilities, and school buses. We have affirmed the right to education with our policy of radical inclusion that has irreversibly, irreversibly overturned the ban on pregnant guys. Championed menstruation health, campaigned nationwide against early child marriage, and provided more support for students with disabilities. My government is working with partners to prioritize early childhood development, ECD, with a comprehensive ECD policy, curriculum framework, and ECD centers. We are also making available community learning facilities throughout the country. We are recruiting and training thousands of teachers and hiring and deploying more school inspectors to every district. Workforce of this nation and making it globally competitive is called raising the wage bill. Then that is good for the future of the development. <laughs> to accelerate long term quality, government has de developed and validated a basic education curriculum framework and subject syllabus and now developing the senior secondary curriculum framework. My government will revise the basic education policy, the 2004 Education Act, the West African Examination Council Act, and the Teacher Service Commission Act. Government has also developed other policies on radical inclusion, comprehensive safety, school feeding, school health, and village schools to further bolster our gains in the basic and senior secondary education sector. We will use more dig digitalization and ICT for more school and education center connectivity, learning assessments, education data, and for continuous professional development for teachers. My government has introduced and we continue to gradually expand guidance counseling, library and laboratory, home economic centers, and adult and non-formal education. My travels to foreign nations and my engagement with partners have all gone through. Today, our education sector benefits from partnerships with Harvard University, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, Yale University, McMaster University, and the University of Sierra Leone. We have quarter partnerships with Global Partnership for Education, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. UNESCO, United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Office, FCDO, West African Examination Council, WAYEC, the Education Partnership Group, EdTech Hub, Georeference Infrastructure and Demographic Data for Development, GRID, and NGO Consortium. We are one of the World Bank's accelerator countries for human capital development. My government will make good use of such valuable partnerships to continue to develop this country. My government will begin the construction of the University of Kanadisia. Thank you.
is establishing with the support of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, and the EU, Sierra Leone's first national computer security and incident response center that will create a resilient and safer cyberspace for current and future generations. And especially to combat borderless crimes that are taking a great social, economic, and security tool on nations. A coherent and comprehensive law that supports the safer use of cyberspace and one that is consistent with international best practices is therefore timely. My government has initiated engagement to review the 2011 copyright law holistically support the development of the music industry, delineate a coherent film policy, and structure the growth of the film industry, and bolster up the development of the creative industries in Sierra Leone. I believe these are massive job creators and incubators for nurturing Sierra Leonean talent and thus further rebrand our nation. Governance reform. The United States of America, America's Meridian Corporation Challenge, has declared Sierra Leone illegible to develop the compact. <laughs> to develop the compact in recognition of our government's performance in investing in people, ruling justly, and economic freedom. Our incremental successes for clamping down on corruption over these three successive years indicate that our successes are good for the image and standing of our country. Good for governance and good for business and good for development. My government will ask to implement necessary legislative and other policy changes to fast track devolution and local government reform. We are also working to strengthen community mobilization and local council service delivery. This social capital approach keeps citizens informed and development is community driven. Foreign policy. Our foreign policy will continue to enhance Sierra Leone's voice, legitimacy, and representation in the international arena. Premised on the thrust of our diplomacy, we have expanded full diplomatic representation to the Republic of Turkey and the Kingdom of Morocco. My government has increased and we continue to work on increasing the level of representation of our nationals in regional and international organizations, including the International Criminal Court, the African Union, and the United Nations. Mind, mindful of a changing diplomatic landscape, my government, with the support of the People's Republic of China, has turned sword for an ultra modern foreign service academy to train our diplomats to advance our country. My government continues to deepen relationships with friendly states and international organizations, and Sierra Leone has gained a lot from mutual cooperation and assistance, especially during this period of COVID-19 pandemic, from friendly nations and institutions around the world. Sierra Leone remains deeply committed to multilateralism and to respect the
the African Common Position on United Nations Security Council reform. Development planning. My government has validated, popularized, and is now implementing the priorities set out in the medium-term national development plan. District Development Coordination Committees have been piloted in Karine, Falaba, Bont, and Pujam districts. In recognition of my government's focused approach to development planning and service delivery using credible data, the World Bank has committed 30 million United States dollars to support in statistics radio to implement the first electronic mid-term population and <laughs> Expand the economy, support job creation, 
act of conserving delivery right across the country. We have made significant progress in constructing over 200 kilometers of major township and trunk roads in the western area and some parts of the province. Among these are the Longley Toka Road, the East Side Bypass Road, the Mayamba Mayamba Junction, and Prince Panatuna Road,
completed the pre-feasibility study of the loan debris. Especially for rice, 
fear and other health. Government implementation of the national micro, micro finance program, MUNAFA, to provide finance to targeted small medium enterprises. Government also provided cash transfer to over 100,000 poor and vulnerable families and informal sector workers. Government also provided 19 billion in critical financial support for parastatals mostly affected, most affected by the pandemic, including the Sierra Leone Airport Authority, the Sierra Leone Civil Aviation Authority, the Sierra Leone Transport Corporation, and the Sierra Leone Postal Services. Government made advance the payment to keep public works on course and to maintain thousands of jobs in the rehabilitation of trunk roads and township streets. Government also continues to ameliorate the country's current debt situation. The resumption of operations at IOO mines and slight recoveries in the agricultural and tourism sectors may support an uptick in the economy. Domestic revenue mobilized by the National Revenue Authority increased marginally, and we continue to do so with various revenue enhancing measures to be implemented by the NRA, including the introduction of the electronic cash register, the international tax administration system, and the efficient implementation of the 2021 Finance Act. International Development Partners mobilize substantial resources to Sierra Leone in respect of the government's record of commitment to fighting corruption, improving public financial management, and good governance. The government has also undertaken extensive reforms in public financial management, including one, the automation of revenue collection and management processes by the NRA. Two, strengthening the legal framework for domestic revenue mobilization. Three, strengthening strengthen of payroll management. Four, expanding the coverage of the integrated financial management information system. Five, strengthening commitment controls for goods and services, uh, good, goods and services expenditures. Six, rolling out the electronics Rolling out the electronic public expenditure tracking survey pets from a regular production of price norm by the National Public Procurement Authority to guide procuring entities. Seven, establish the, an information management system to record, track, monitor, and report on the execution of all government contracts. Eight, strengthening the judiciary oversight of state-owned enterprises, resulting in the reduction of their liabilities. Nine, the reconstitution of functional audit committees in 50 MBAs and local councils, and strengthening them to follow up on audit recommendations. And 10, continuing to provide real-time financial management guidance to the National COVID-19 Emergency Response Center, NACOVA. These actions have maintained macroeconomic stability and transparency in public financial management. The Bank of Sierra Leone's astute monetary policy reduced inflation to single digits for the first time in six years. <laughs> international reserve for unprecedented levels. The commercial management has also witnessed a lot of consequences of prudent management and policies. In the last few years, for instance, our state-owned local commercial bank and the Australian commercial bank have been transformed from loss-making entities to profit-making banks as a result Investors who are here in 2018 
are still here and doing business in 2021. And even more investors have come to Sweden in the last three years. My government will continue to make the investment climate more predictable, flexible, and transparent with pro business in incentives. Local manufacturing has been boosted as, as a consequence. Even through COVID-19, the Petroleum Regulatory Agency is constructing a second petrol agency, maintained an open market policy, developed a new tank, a, a new tank plan to hold strategic stock, introduced guidelines for downstream activities, maintained price stability based on transparent pricing formula in spite of supply chain disruption and significantly improved petroleum revenue and service delivery in the downstream petroleum sector. Mines and mineral resources. Mines and mineral resources. Natural resource extraction has not had the requisite impact on developing our economy. In attractive legal and regulatory regimes for the sector weakening the state's capacity to generate revenues from, from this, for its social and economic programs. The bullets. The further left mining communities poorer and condemned to live with the consequences of environmental degradation and associated problems. In spite of shrinking investment capital and supply chain and logistic constraints as a result of COVID-19 pandemic, the mining sector has remained relatively buoyant. New mining companies have started operations. Our development strategy for the sector includes revising the Mines and Minerals Act to ensure effective governance and transparency in the sector, developing shared infrastructure around mining and optimizing local participation in the sector. Beyond job creation, we want to use proceeds from mining as a catalyst for development. Fisheries. My government has put in place effective fisheries management and governance policies to achieve our sustainable fisheries and biodiversity conservation goals through a strengthened policy and regulatory framework, scientific fish stock assessment and data collection, and deterring and minimizing illegal, unreported, and unregulated activities in our territorial waters. There is now, more than ever before in the history of this country, greater transparency in the fishery sector. On the website of the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, we now publish a registry of vessels with vessel monitoring system, fisheries management measures, and revenue generated from licensing, fines, and other charges. My government has improved infrastructure for fisheries, fisheries development, and access to international markets. I recently commissioned the Australian fishing, the Sea of Fishing Companies, Ultra Border Fishing Processing Facility at Kisidok here. That we enhance the value addition for domestic and international markets. To further boost fish production through aquaculture, government has collaborated with food with the Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, to acquire a fish poultry feed making machine. One of the international belt and road initiative, my government has received 55 million United States dollars as grant from the People's Republic of China to construct a fish harbor and its ancillary structure. Land orders, land orders will be fully compensated and all environmental due diligence will be done. The Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources we work with all stakeholders for the effective implementation of the project. When fully operational, the fish harbor will support the growth of the fishing sector. 
environment, sustainability and resilience. Addressing environmental issues is critical for sustainable development. To improve environmental outcomes, government is reviewing and updating various legislation promoting sustainable environmental protection, including national reforestation and timber management initiatives, managing and conserving wetlands, and furthering community-based environmental education. My government believes that a green recovery from COVID-19 is achievable, more sustainable, and in the best interest of our development as a nation. My government will implement a number of binding, nationally appropriate mitigation actions and take necessary measures to support a green growth in our sectors of the economy. We have an opportunity to invest in a green economy that minimizes the environmental impact of biodiversity loss, waste management, and plastic pollution. We will therefore associate closely with all international actions on a green recovery. The National Disaster Management Agency, my government instituted, is fully operational. NASA has also completed pilot registration of disaster prone areas of Freetown, Cambia, and Pujam as part of the disaster preparedness planning. My government will enact the National Reforestation and Timber Governance Agency Act that provides for sustainable forest resource management and reforestation. Sports. My government has reviewed the regulatory and policy instrument for sports development, increased budgetary support to sports, and instituted. Just over a week ago, facilitated by the Sierra Leone Football Association leadership, I met with the FIFA and Confederation of Africa Football Association presidents. The first time in our country's history, the president has ever met with both leaders. We discuss sports infrastructure, the development of youth and women's football, technical support and training, and broad support for Syria News being to host the African Nations Cup final. My government has signed a memorandum of understanding for the second phase re renovation of the national stadium and all its facilities to international standards. These will include the main pool, hostels, swimming pools, the practice field, an ultra-modern volleyball court, the basketball court, and the tennis court. Public safety and security, immigration and peacekeeping. My government has completed the first fire station, stations in Kailan. Pujem, Western Rura, and Kabala. Additional fire stations will be constructed in the coming year in Port Loco. We will purchase additional fire engines to recruit more firefighters and be sent to Parliament the first ever fire fire safety policy and bill. The Office of National Security has conducted vulnerability assessment of all critical national infrastructure, including MDAs and hospitality sites, with a view to identifying security gaps and preferring recommendations. My government has reintroduced visa on arrival to ease travel to Sierra Leone, introduced a comprehensive immigration strategy and enhanced border patrol and immigration services nationwide. Measures will be presented to enhance secure 
and its uh, national infrastructure and borders. My government has strengthened coordination among various agencies to tackle statelessness, data trafficking in person, curtail the proliferation of small arms, and prevent the illegal trade in narcotics. Sierra Leone has been commended by the United States Department for its action in interdicting, trafficking in persons, charging and convicting offenders. And Sierra Leone has been placed on second tier of the first, for the first time in this nation's history. <laughs> Legislation will be presented to consolidate these gains. We are in the congesting prisons and we have invested more in safe, secure and humane custody of inmates. We have maintained the moratorium on death penalty. My government believes that the death penalty is cruel, inhumane and unusual. Legislation will be brought forward for the abolition of the death penalty. We have recruited more law enforcement officers, including a large cohort of women, continued professionalizing the police force, and expanding their operations from supporting NACOBA and uh, fighting transnational crime to supporting advocacy and deterrence of sexual and gender-based violence. The Sierra Leone Police is contributing to maintaining world peace with three deployments of 239 peacekeepers to three missions, UNAMI in Sudan, OMIS in South Sudan, and Amazon in Somalia. My government is also fully committed to enabling the participation of the public Australian Armed Forces, ARSLAD, in maintaining international peace and security. The public Australian Armed Forces at the strategic level, my government is developing a defense policy framework that commits the, R the RSLAF to both operating effectively and supporting national development. My government is constructing accommodation facilities, rolling out 25% salary increment over three years, expanding the mandate of the Armed Forces Technical Education College, Investing in the armed forces and cultural unit and establishing a full scale army engineering unit to expand defense cooperation that will enhance the capacity of our armed forces. I have authorized the appointment of defense attache to our missions in the United Arab Emirates and the Republic of Turkey. Labor and social security. My government has harmonized and enforced labor laws, maintained a close eye on work migration, worker migration, monitored occupational health and safety, operationalized a centralized em uh, employment exchange and a work permit bureau, and successfully arbitrated industrial relations disputes. Following a technical audit, the National Social Security and Insurance Trust, NASIC, we soon appraised its entire portfolio, placement with commercial banks, equity companies, shares and stocks, deep ventures and real estate, and new investment opportunities. NASIC services will also migrate to a fully functional, web-based, integrated, biometric pension operating system. The NASIC Act will soon be reviewed to enhance compliance with best practice in the administration of pension funds and for long-term sustainability of the social security system. Tourism. Tourism is critical to the economic diversification and job creation. In spite of COVID-19, my government has engaged partners and local communities 
to produce a tourism asset register, develop ecotourism and other tourism products, clean and beautify beaches, provide skills training for entrepreneurs and stakeholders in tourism, and to take other steps to promote tourism in Sierra Leone. All African American brothers and sisters have laid their rightful claim to Sierra Leone citizenship through genealogy. They bring immeasurable advantages to our country. The, the homecoming of beauty pageants and the reapplication of the organizers of the Budapest to Fleet and Rally are solid votes of confidence in our country as a tourist destination. Youth policy. My government sees the youth board in Sierra Leone as an opportunity. Hence the heavy investment in human capital development at all levels. As a demonstration of this commitment to build the capacity of youth, as a demonstration of that commitment to build the capacity of youth, job creation, and generate new career pathways for youth, my government has revised the national youth policy and developed a five-year sector strategic plan. Even during the COVID-19 pandemic, hundreds of youths have been engaged in various farming activities trained in various entrepreneurial and business management skills, and government has worked with development partners on employment promotion initiatives. Youth population have been involved in the de-risking initiatives, anti-FGBV campaigns, and in civic engagement on peace consolidation, violence, and drug abuse. My government constructed and fitted 70 fishing boats with outboard engines, navigational equipment, and accessories at a total of 5.5 billion euros to support youth, youth, to support youth employment and empowerment of seven coastal districts and communities. To support youth livelihood skills, my government has constructed 10 car wash centers in the Western area. The 428 car wash centers are being constructed nationwide. This initiative we create households for this initiative we create thousands of jobs for youth for the youth for the youth in this country. Today, the National Youth Service has trained and deployed over 1,000 graduates as service for to MBA uh, for internship opportunities. Several, several youth training programs to focus on providing disadvantaged young women and girls with digital learning, with digital learning and resource center where they will acquire skills in entrepreneurship. Financial literacy, transformational leadership, and social change, and business startup funds. Increasing energy access. My government sees vigorous energy sector reform as critical to economic growth, health, and social well being. More households, are, more households are now connected to the grid than in 2018. We have increased electricity generation and transmission capacity over the last year. We will augment generation capacity with 87 megawatts of confirmed investment in the sector. And we will soon commission a six megawatt solar park in Newton. Electricity, electricity supply has been restored to Lusa. 39 communities are to be electrified along the CLS, CLSG West African Pool, post 225 kV transmission network, including Sibi and Potoro in the south. Kakaman Goram, 
and Jayama in the east, Mimikoro included, and Masingi, Bumbuna, Matutuka, Kamalu, Kamaki, Mimikoro, We now generate we now generate sufficient electricity in Britain. But, but we inherited a defective ticket and transmission and distribution system that is incapable of evacuating and transmitting power that is generated. made worse by the deliberate vandalization by ill-motivated citizens of transformers and installed equipment. Therefore, therefore, let me state that citizens who are engaged in such vandalization activities will face the full force of the law. The support from the World Bank, my government is currently addressing the perennial problem of load shedding and massive inefficiencies in the power evacuation and distribution in Britain by expanding and or upgrading the 33 kV and 11 kV bridge in, in Britain. This distribution transformers and lines are also being installed in 33 unserved communities. The vendor supply process for electricity meters means meters are now easily available. In collaboration with partners, we have commissioned 50 rural mini grids and four smaller pilot systems in 54 kingdoms with 8,000 household connections in beneficiary communities and another 44 mini grids have been developed in 44 chiefdoms in the country. Planning and rural electrification units have been set up to supervise rural electrification activities, develop regulations, and develop cost reflective tariffs. The electrification of seven district towns, Kabala, Kambia, Mayamba, Thailand, Pujem, Bong and Mayamba, Bong and Mashu is well underway. With two expansion of the Bumbuna electricity, electricity dam is also in pro progress. Access to water. My government will present legislation for the better management of intervention for better management of intervention in the water and sanitation sector. Additional measures have been developed for dam safety, water use and catchment and catchment, groundwater use, pollution control, water consumer services, and service provider, and service provider reporting rules. With support from the World Bank, my government is rehabilitating the water treatment plant at Babadori Dam and installing a four kilometer distribution network for improving water supply to Bangaila, Malima, and Kanibu communities. With funding support from the Millennium Challenge Corporation, we have started universal water metering in the western area with near completion of water kiosks, uh, kiosks five in Abadin and six in Kintam. And the installation of five kilometers of distribution pipelines. Government is also installing gravity fed water systems across several communities in Waterloo, Mambo and Hamilton. And additional gravity fed water systems in Kono, Kwenadugu and Mr. Government has procured 13 bowsers to support community water supply efforts in poorly served areas in Britain during the dry season months. 
a six-term rural water supply project funded by my government will benefit 1.5 million citizens around the country. It will rehabilitate, optimize, and expand the existing water facilities such as water intakes, treatment plants, transmission mains, distribution networks, and metering. Solar powered boreholes with stand posts and distribution lines have been installed in various communities to serve thousands of people. More measures will be taken to increase access to portable water. Land reform and housing. My government believes that land reform should focus on legally framing and safeguarding rights within the context of tension between former and informal customary rights, streamlining and modernizing land delivery, encouraging the sustainable use of land and responsible investment, maintaining a coherent database of all land, and providing fair mechanism for land dispute resolution. My government's position is that Sierra Leoneans who wish to invest in land should have land available to them without hindrance or discrimination. My government intends to tackle the urban housing problem by using a private sector-led ecosystem of reforms, innovative designs, and financing reforms, safe and affordable housing is supportive of human capital development priorities and aligns with our country's aspiration to meet the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDG 11. National cohesion and democracy. Legislation that, establish, that establishes an independent commission for peace and national cohesion has been ratified. The National Commission for Democracy and the National Council for Civic Education and Development are leading a civic oriented activity, uh, are leading on civic oriented activities aimed at fostering good citizenship that is favorable to the functioning of our democracy. The National Electoral Commission has developed a strategic plan with 10 pillars that support transparent and credible elections within international best practices. Sierra Leone can, can, further, Leone can further strengthen and consolidate its democracy with minority populations and com communities when minority populations and communities are represented. Measures to be considered for making our democracy more inclusive and more representative. The government has constituted a technical review of the white paper on Justice Carbon Constitutional Review Committee. Key provisions that strengthen our democracy and protect human and constitutional rights of citizens will be fully considered. Institutional effectiveness and reform. <laughs> Government remains committed to strengthen public sector institutions and public service delivery. The public service bill will be brought forward and my government will review the civil service code. In the changing world of technology, government remains committed to automating the recruitment to retirement process for personnel across 80% of the civil service. To enhance institutional effectiveness, the Ministry of Planning and Development will normalize performance management assessments to include departments, agencies, parastatals, and state-owned enterprises. Management and structural reviews of MDAs have been undertaken with a view to proposing necessary strategic alignment. There is progress, there is progress on establishing a wage and compensation commission. 
judiciary, justice sector reform. Every citizen should benefit from a fair, impartial, and effective justice system. My government has supported the appointment of 15 more high court judges and 11 more magistrates. There are now regular high court criminal sessions in Fujian, Tonkonili, Bonf, Kambia, Kwedadugu, Kailam, Mayamba, Putloko, and Kono districts. More qualified women now serve in senior management positions in the judiciary. These include the master and registrar, court operations manager, human resource manager, deputy master and registrar, court of appeal registrar. Added to them are two female judges in the Supreme Court, five in the court of appeal, and five in the high court. Through constitutional review, the High Court has been divided into eight divisions with three specialized courts adjudicating corruption cases, dealing with industrial and social security disputes, and handling sexual offenses cases. Digitalization of court processes is ongoing. Case loads are now lower, and prosecution and conviction rates have improved in all courts. My government has improved the landscape for commercial law by acceding to international instruments. The small claims commercial courts have been set up to fast track cases in, in magistrate courts with claims of under 50 million euros. Gender. Women's empowerment, social welfare, and human rights. Hey, hey. My government will take more action to protect, especially women and girls, from sexual and gender based violence. The Child, the Child Rights Act of 20, uh, 2007 will be updated and the national achievement and a national street children strategy will be presented. More measures to concretize and operationalize the gender equality and women's empowerment policy will be presented. Over the coming year, women's empowerment programs will be a priority. As a consequence of our concerted action to fight SGBP, Sierra Leone is now among the nine countries in the world to serve as world mentor for the women, peace and security, and human and humanitarian action to combat. Sierra Leone has also clinched the presidency of the UN Women Board, a UN entity for gender equality and women empowerment. My government has also consented to sponsor a UN resolution on the Survivors' Bill of Rights for sexual and gender-based violence. <laughs> Measures to address disability, including addressing stigma and discrimination, inclusive education, socioeconomic empowerment, innovation and technology, disaggregated data, and women with, dis with disability will be presented. We we'll also ask to maintain and improve on our enviable global reputation for peaceful interfaith coexistence and religious tolerance. Uh -huh. Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members of Parliament, additional measures to be laid before you. I implore us, I implore us all on the occasion of the 60th anniversary of the independence of this nation to unite our country around values of discipline, fairness, 
equal access, equal opportunity, respect for diversity, and more that makes us zero living. On that note, may God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, grant us wisdom
speak out soon. So, honorable members, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, immediately after the national anthem, we expect His Excellency the President, the Honorable Vice President, the First Lady, accompanied by the Speaker, the leaders, direct to the Speaker's suite. Meanwhile, please patiently wait in your places for Mr. Speaker to return and adjourn this sitting of the House. Please wait in your respective seats. I thank you. Thank you. 